California, of course, is one of those places where many people think that they can make a fortune, whatever their age or family background, if they're willing to take a chance to risk a little adventure. The state, after all, is filled with those stories. Tonight, Brian Ross has the story of four grandmothers who took a chance in California, but didn't quite make it. In the canyons above Beverly Hills, there's a secluded ranch house that rents for $8,000 a month. Last year, it was the headquarters of one of the most unlikely criminal organizations ever to hit California. The people who lived in the house, past this gate, ran a huge cocaine business. There were hundreds of pounds of cocaine, suitcases full of cash, hoodlums and drug dealers from South America, and, and at the top of it all, four middle-aged divorced women, grandmothers, who apparently went into the cocaine business looking for a little excitement. There were Barb and Dottie, Barbara Muzine and Dorothy Hackett, shown here on one of their sprees in Las Vegas. Barb and Dottie were the first of their grandmothers to hook up with the South American drug dealers. And when business got good, they recruited other grandmothers. I said, my God, what did I get into? You know, this is Grandma Joy, 58-year-old Joy Edelman. Her job with the grandmothers was babysitter, to babysit the cocaine. Babysitting is a very easy job because the cocaine doesn't talk, it doesn't cry, it just sits there. The first thing I learned, if you took, chlor you took a glass of Clorox and you dropped in a little bit of cocaine, if it floated down very nicely like this, it was real good. If it will drop down real fast, forget it. <laughs> it was cut. The grandmothers got into the cocaine business in Miami our grandmother Barb was the manager of this clothing company that imported clothes from Colombia. And as sort of a sideline, she took money to the bank for people. Briefcases full of money, drug money, thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars. But as the business grew and the grandmothers moved west, they began to make mistakes and get into some very big trouble. This tape was made by a concealed camera as the grandmothers met with men they thought were corrupt bankers. The bankers turned out to be undercover IRS agents who listened carefully as grandmothers Barb and Dottie explained the code they used so big drug deals would sound like clothing deals. Okay, dresses, dresses are big amounts. Right. And blouses and sweaters are like, if it's 500 and 500,349, we can receive 500 dresses and 349 blouses. Keep that straight. Okay, that so, one keep straight. Okay. Authorities say the Grandma Mafia was an organization... It wasn't too long afterward that the grandmothers found themselves on the 6 o'clock news as government prosecutors announced the indictment of the grandmothers and the seizure of cocaine, money, and guns. Now, in a federal courtroom in Los Angeles, Barbara Muzine, Grandmother Barb, is on trial on drug and racketeering charges. The three other grandmothers have all pleaded guilty and are testifying against Barbara who could go to prison for the rest of her life if she is convicted. A lot of us felt that, oh, well, we can do the same thing men can do. You know, men do it. Why can't we? Uh-uh. It hasn't worked that way. And I made a very big mistake in my life. And uh, it was a very big price that I paid because the bottom line was the babysitting consisted that I wound up with 37 pounds of cocaine in my house. I had received it one day, and the next day, I was busted. Let me see this Joy Edelman's secret life in the cocaine business is over. Yeah, huh? Now she does a little shopping for her grandson and waits to find out if she'll be put on probation or sent to prison. She was a grandmother looking for some easy cash and a little excitement. Now she has to explain to a judge, to her family, and to herself just what she was doing with 37 pounds of cocaine in her closet. Brian Ross, NBC News.